Welcome everybody to this week's Mark Nofri Head Coaches Show. As always, joined by the head coach of Sacred Heart, Mark Nofri, and a 31 to six happy homecoming victory over Cornell. Coach, it might have been your most impressive and decisive, thorough victory of the year on all three sides of the ball, but it was the playmakers again shining in Tyler Doobie. 202 yards in the air, an 80 yard touchdown reception. Those 202 yards, the second most receiving yards in program history. He does it week after week, but where does this one rank on his all-time performances? Uh, obviously, it's one of the top. Um, you know, like I said, the kid never seems to amaze me. Um, we've seen him now for four years, and uh, he continues to make plays after plays. And uh, he's just he's an unbelievable athlete with great hand-eye coordination, body control, and, uh, you know, deceivingly fast. He gets behind people. And, uh, you know, him and RJ got a great connection going. And, uh, like I said, after four years, uh, it doesn't surprise me some of the catches he makes and the things he does for our program, and that's why we're winning. That's what he did receiving, but how about throwing a one-yard <laughs> touchdown to Connor Caveney on a play we haven't seen yet. Connor Caveney lines up from defense to offense on a one-yard play, and they hook up. That was executed beautifully. You had to love that. Yeah, you know, Coach Bowles put that in earlier in the week, and uh, we know – Obviously, uh, Connor Caveney is one of our best defensive linemen, and uh, he's been that. He's been a starter for us for four years. And uh, when we recruited him, he was a hockey player in uh, Cushing Academy, so we knew he was a good athlete and he can do a bunch of different things. Uh, we've been putting him in uh, tight end last week and this week, and uh, Coach Bowles drew something up. And uh, like I said, between him and Doobie, they connected, and uh, it was good. It was fun to watch and a little bit something different for us. And uh, I think the kids got to. Got a lot of talent. Like I said, if you're going to play both sides of the ball, obviously you're a good athlete. Well, we talk about how important all three phases of the game are, and Jamie Ross has been just outstanding this year. Another fantastic performance. He earns NEC Special Teams Player of the Week. Three of his six punts going inside the 20, really changing uh, the field position game and giving your defense a chance to shine. How important has he been? He's a huge weapon for us. You know, uh, Jamie, same thing as a four-year starter for us. Um, he's done a great job this year. I mean, he's really worked hard in the offseason, and you can see the difference this year compared to last year. And uh, when you got a weapon like that and you can pin the – pin the other offense inside the 20 like that and then again it changes the field position but also helps us offensively because that's you know if you can get the ball back in good territory at midfield something like that it's uh, you know a couple first downs that we don't have to get to get in the scoring position so Jamie's been great for us I got no complaints with him I'm really happy for the kid um, like I said he earned special teams player of the week and he's been working hard at it and uh, great kid you know just a great kid I'm happy to see the success he's having this year. And as we say, that allows the defense to shine, and boy, did Connor Candido and James Rents really pressuring the quarterback. This might have been Candido's best game of the year. Double-digit tackles for both. What do they do, and how do they put you in a position to win when they can get to the quarterback like that? Oh, do? absolutely. You know, Connor uh, texted me Saturday night, you know, and we were going back and forth, and I told him I think it was the best game I've seen him play in, in his four years. I mean, he was all over the field, and he was on fire. I mean, he was hitting people left and right, and – um, between him and Rents, when you can pressure the quarterback, it makes it you know a lot easier for our defensive secondary. But those guys, you know, when you get pressure up front, and you're making tackles for loss and sacks. It just it sets the tone defensively. And uh, you know, obviously those two kids st stood out for us as well. But I, I think uh, Phil Paul Hill played probably his best game at defensive back for us as well this week as well. I mean, you know, when Connor and James are pressuring the quarterbacks, it makes it easier on those guys, but, you know, Phil stepped up and, and had some good plays, and defensively those guys set the tone, and when you're running around with 11 guys hitting people like that and flying to the ball, it makes it a lot of fun. So here we go. The non-conference portion of the season is over. It's conference play from here on out, and you have a big one against your in-state rivals in Central Connecticut coming up at home this Saturday. They're 1-1, one and one, fell to Dartmouth this past weekend. Two-part question. One, how do you feel about where your team is right now, 4-2 and two with the non-conference schedule passed? And what do you look forward to against the Blue Devils coming in this weekend? I, right now, I feel good about our team. I mean, you know, obviously we can improve each week, but I think we're coming off two wins um, where our kids – it played real well. You know, we fixed some of the mistakes that we had in the past, and uh, we're protecting the ball, which is always key. And we're getting turnovers on defense. And I like where we're at right now as a team. I, and we talk about it, continue to play with the momentum and stop beating ourselves, play the opponent that we're supposed to play and not the game that's amongst ourselves. So I like where we're at. we got to continue to improve and get better each week. Uh, but the NEC is a tough conference. And, you know, it, it's anybody's right now, it's up for grabs. And I, and I say it all the time. I think the team that's going to win the conference this year is a team that's playing 
playing the best at the end of the year and a team that's probably the most healthiest. Um, and right now, you know, we're sitting at one and one, and all we're looking forward to is Central this weekend going to two and zero. Oh. They're a good football team. You know, Coach Rossimano does a great job. I mean, he's been a winner wherever he was. He was at Albany as an assistant for a long time. He won at University of New Haven. Uh, he'll do a great job up there at Central, and he's got a good football team. They're very talented. They have very good skilled players, um, and they're very good on offense. So, like I said, we got our work cut out for us this week, and each week we need to understand that we're going to continue to focus on that game and that team that we're playing. The NEC is tough, and it's anybody's game, and this week we're focused right now on Central. Hopefully get to 2-0, and and then we'll talk about the next one after this weekend. So last weekend being homecoming, this upcoming weekend being family weekend, another big crowd expected, nearly a record crowd, by the way, of 4,400 this past Saturday. Should be about that once again this weekend. How does your team feel finally getting back home, getting a chance to play in front of that big crowd and getting another opportunity this weekend and what should be a home field advantage? Well, I, I listen. I can't. Uh, I can't speak for the kids, but I know when they come out of that tunnel and there's 4,500 to 5,000 people here, it makes them feel great. And me as the head coach, I, I can't be more thankful than the support that we're getting from the students, the faculty, the administration, um, the parents, and the friends of the families. I mean, it's great turnouts, um, and I couldn't be happy. Even when we go on the road, we travel well, but to come home and play in front of your home crowd is something special. And I know the kids enjoy it, and they really look forward to it, and it makes a difference. You know, to start the game for us. Thanks a lot, Coach, as always, for the time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Mark Nofrey, head coach of Sacred Heart Football. So it's Central Connecticut coming to Fairfield to take on Sacred Heart at 1 o'clock. Tickets are available on sacredheartpioneers.com slash tickets to make sure you get there. And if you can't, ESPN3 has the coverage. Hope to see you this weekend.